everybody and welcome back to Whiskey Pilgrim and yeah to my whiskey collection 2020 yeah I did one 2019 and I'm gonna do another one as well this year 2020 yeah so uh, just to inform you where, where it's gonna be a long video probably I'm gonna try to keep it as short as possible I will also not film on the background my cabinet because last time I did it there was some audio problems so I will just Take one bottle, show it to you, <clears throat> and there will be cuts from different countries, regions from Scotland, and so on. So yeah, let's get to it. And yeah, let's do some Irish whiskey. Irish. So yeah, I'm going to show you my Irish collection. I only have three bottles so far. I just started my journey recently into Irish whiskey, so... The first one first is the Glendalog, Glendalog, uh, single malt Irish whiskey, 13 years old. Yes. Second one will be Redbreast, 15 year old. I tried this one way way back. It was really lovely. Uh, and the Barabazon bottling number one from Teeling. So there we go. That's my Irish whiskeys. Not much. But it's gonna grow this collection because I'm really starting to like Irish whiskey. So, so now we are gonna go to India and to Amrut. Uh, I will do um, further down the line, you could say, or yeah, in November there will be some uh, videos from different distilleries or yeah, dis distillers I would say that will go more in depth to. One of them will be Amrut. So. Without further ado, let's show you my collection. Let's start with the first one, the Karabam from Amrit. Really nice, really nice. Um, Narangi as well. Batch one, if you're interesting to know. Uh, Fusion, Let's see here. There we go. The Fusion, fabulous, good, fabulously good whiskey. Uh, we have the. Amrut Porto Nova, or Porto Nova, really nice whiskey as well, bloody good, try it before you buy though, we might not like it. Um, the Amrut Indian Single Malt Whiskey, Cast Range, yeah, this is the Cast Range version of their Single Malt, let's see, they got better there, quite a good ABV, 61.8%. Also fabulously good. Um, the two last ones, if you can still see me here, <laughs> it's gonna arrange these bottles. Is this one a single cask? This will be the bourbon single cask they did for Europe. A really good single cask bourbon matured whiskey. Uh, and also the last Ambrit will be a single cask, and that will be a peated barley port pipe. Let's see here. There we go. Look at that color. It is peated as it says. Man, it's fucking amazing. So, let's get into the next one. Yeah, let's get into some American whiskeys. So, first one we're gonna start with will be Balconies. Yeah, Balconies. So, let's start with the first one. This one. As from the that boutique e whiskey company that I bought, it is a two-year-old um, uh, malt spirit, so it cannot be called uh, whiskey here in Europe or here in Sweden or in Scotland or any country that follows the guidelines of the Scottish people, or Scottish Associ Whiskey Association. But still, it is really good. It was on my top five whiskies last year. It's really good. Even though it's not a whiskey yet, so to say, but it's still a whiskey in America. It is really good. So it was a Olorosa Share Cast Mature one. Let's see here. I'll just leave it like that. Or not. There we go. Next one. Is there Texas Rye 100 proof? Nice stuff. Um, another one will be, um, let's see here, so I take them in, in the right order. <laughs> um, Texas Single Malt. If you haven't tried this one, I would highly recommend people try. There are a lot of other American whiskey Single Malts. I have not tried them, unfortunately. 
I would like to try more Sigamalt from America. This is really good. Unfortunately for me, all of these are ridiculously expensive for me to buy. But in my opinion, I think they are worth having if you want to pay that money for it. So, but this is Texas Sigamalt. It is fantastic in my view. Uh, next one will be the Baby Blue. The Baby Blue. Yeah, blue corn whiskey. Interesting stuff. And we're, we're nice actually, really nice. But I will say that I think this one is amazing. This is like, yeah, probably the best balconies I had so far. I haven't had any more of the more limited releases, but this is true blue. It is amazing. Also blue corn, more mature than this one. The baby blue, and it's fantastic. And also I do have the true blue castridge as well. Ridiculously good, really nice stuff as well, but the alcohol is a little bit more hmm, on it, so I still like the the original or the more traditional True Blue without the cast range. So, just gonna pause and we're gonna have some more American whiskeys here. So yeah, let's continue our American whiskeys. Uh, next one will be from Rocktown, the Arkansas Hickory Smoked Whiskey. Yeah, uh, maybe not to everyone's uh, liking, I would like to say actually. It is, um, yeah, very special. It's smoky, smoked hickory whiskey. So it's, instead of the peat whiskeys, it has a hickory smoked whiskey taste, flavor to it. Very special, very special. Maybe not for everyone. Uh, next one is the Rocktown Arkansas Single Barrel Reserve Bourbon Whiskey Cast Range. I'm trying to save this as much as possible. It is really good. It was just one of 222 bottles. It's really nice. Um, next one is the Stag Junior. I think this is batch free, if I'm not mistaken. It is 66.05% ABV or 132.1 proof. Yeah, Stag Junior, really nice. Uh, next one is a Booker's, and I have no idea what this Booker's is. It's quite old when I bought it, or I bought it many years ago. Things, yeah, it's like that. Uh, next one is an um, Jack Daniel singles. I don't know, Silver Select single barrel. Uh, this is a travel retail. I think this is discontinued now, or replaced by something else. Uh, next one will be Eagle Rare, and this is the ten-year-old, but it has the aged in the background. So yeah, there we go. Nice stuff. Could be more cheaper, in my view. Um, next one, uh, rye whiskey, Sazerac rye. It's usually made, I think, for cocktails, as far as I understood. But yeah. Uh, next one, as well, next one, next one, <laughs> is the Woodford Reserve Double Oak. Uh, it's great. I have nothing against this one. I do think the standard one is better. It is not as sweet as this one. This one is quite sweet. Um, just gonna put them there so I don't drop them. Uh, next one is this one Pikes Wheel Straight Rye Whiskey 110 proof. This is amazing. This is amazing stuff. I recommend you to try this one if you can get your chance to try it. Uh, another one is one of those uh, that not many people have tried. It's a uh, weird one I would like to say <laughs> actually I tried it in a whiskey festival and I bought it just because I was I really enjoyed it this is a straight triticale whiskey right uh, let's say again a straight triticale whiskey a rye wheat hybrid from dry fly yeah really interesting it has in my view quite a licorice tone to it as I remember and uh, my last American whiskey is this one the colonial E.H. Taylor small batch I really like this I really like this I haven't tried a single barrel but uh, I could have bought them as well but I just bought this one <laughs> really nice so that was my American whiskies now we're going to next country <laughs> So yeah, now we're going into Japanese whiskies, and I've already done a review on all of these, so please check them out if you feel like to. Uh, let's start with this one, the Nika Coffee Grain Whiskey. I like this one more than the Coffee Malt. 
And it got a little heated arguments because of that, I think. <laughs> I never had that many dislikes on a video before. <laughs> so that's life. Next one is the Yuichi 10 year old. This is really great stuff. Fortunately, discontinued. Next one will be the Hakushu 12 year old uh, Japanese single malt whiskey. Peter whiskey, and it is great stuff. If you do find it, don't pay any of these ridiculous secondary prices. If you don't have the money, I feel like you want to do it though. But I would not recommend. Um, the Yamasaki 12 year old. Yes. Great whiskey as well at, at its price point when I bought it. Uh, next one is probably my most oddest Japanese whiskey. And that will be this one. Uh, the Yamasaki Single Malt Bourbon Barrel 2013. The Bourbon Barrel 2013, yeah. So if you like bourbon matured whiskies, this is it. This is really good. Unfortunately, this one goes for like 10 times now, I think. The price for I bought it, and it's not worth it, people. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, next one will be probably one of the more nice looking bottles, in my view. And that is Hibiki, 12 year old. Yeah. A blended Japanese whiskey from the Suntory. Great whiskey. But now, ridiculously overpriced. Uh, next one. 17 year old Hibiki as well. This one I also do like. If you like the 12 year old or 17 year old, I'll leave it up to you. But once upon a time, great accessible whiskies. Now long gone and ridiculously overpriced. So let's get into the last country I do have, and that is my own country, Sweden. So, yeah, people, let's get into Swedish whiskey. So, where do we start? Well, we start with this one. We take the other ones first that I only have one bottle of. And that will be Vattedalen Rye Whiskey. This was a very limited one. I don't know if they're going to release anymore or have released anything else. But this was a rye whiskey that just came out of nowhere. It's just 400 bottles ever released on this one. And it's really good rye whiskey, in my opinion. Uh, next one is from Gammestilla Anna Stina Kristina. Or Anna Kristina. The release they did on Gammestilla. Let's see here. Let's see if we get a better look. There we go. There we go. Yeah. This one is also really good. Um, a single cask McMara, the only McMara bottle I have. That's a big one. I have some samples. Um, it's a single cask and it's a peated bourbon cask. So, yeah. It's okay. Uh, I tried other single casks that have been really good. If I should be honest, really amazing. The good Hungarian oak, I think it was. This is really good. And the uh, last one of the the one I only have one of from the distillery is Smugen, or as you would say in English, Smugen. Smugen, but we say Smugen. It's an eight year old and it's a Saturnes um, matured whiskey. Unfortunately, I do not like Saturnes cask finished whiskies or matured whiskies so far in my journey. I haven't really come to like them, but maybe one day it will change. But this is the one. Yeah, and now let's just pause and we're gonna continue. And now to the only distillery I have ever visited, and that is Vein or Spirit of Vein in Backevalsbyen. So here we go, the first ever Swedish corn whiskey. Really good, and uh, also the first ever Swedish rye whiskey produced. Then Vattedalen came. <laughs> So, and then we have two single malts as well from Vein. We have one, uh, number seven, Al Qaeda. Really good, really good. Uh, and Misar, number six point one, as well. Also really good stuff. And also give them props for a lovely shape of bottles. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just gonna pause and we're gonna continue. And yeah, let's continue with probably my favorite so far Swedish releases of whiskey. And that is from Bashlagen, and who bought up the close distillery Grytiton. So let's start with this, what I have in my collection. Uh, the first one is the Sherry Darling Fairy, six year old Sherry Cask matured. Incredibly good Swedish Sherry Cask whiskey. The next one is basically nearly, nearly, nearly the same one. Um, it's also six year old, it's also Sherry. Influence is the six-year-old Sherry Darling Fairy, but it's peated instead. So 
Unpeated, unpeated. Great valued whiskey. This is gonna be gone one day. Not just the bottle, but what remains in the cask one day. And now let's get into more of some of the more even limited, limited ones that I have. The first one is part of a series of five called Swedish um, Creature or Mythology Creatures. This is uh, Elva or Elf, not Elf, but um, Fairy. Fairy. It is uh, an interesting one. It's 100% Swedish oak, lightly peated. Nice. Uh, next one is one of those I really like. Uh, it's the, um, from the art collection they did, and it's a single cask, Madeira cask. To me, this is a really great stuff. Really great stuff. Uh, next one is uh, the Two Heart. It's an eight year old whiskey. It is matured in bourbon sherry cask. Also, fabulously good whiskey. Made whiskey. Fantastic craftsmanship. Next one is the uh, French Oak series they did, and this is also the last one. This is um, X Bordeaux cask, single cask they did. Look at that color, just incredible. Tastes really good as well in my view. And the last one is actually not from Berchlagen, but still is great done in it. The distillery that was closed, and it is uh, this one. It's from Silent Swede from El Svenska Elvatten or Swedish Firewater. And this is a French uh, virgin oak cask, or virgin French oak cask. It is insane. I think this was my third whiskey of the year, for a good reason. It is really good. Really good stuff, so let's pause, and we're gonna continue this journey. So yeah, let's continue the Swedish whiskey with High Coast, or as it was once known as, Box. Yeah. So this is a Dalve, really good bourbon peated whiskey. Uh, and then they did another one, a version of it, it has more sherry influence. It's called Heiko's Dalve, sherry influence. <laughs> so yep, also this one, I do prefer the bourbon one more over this one. Yeah, but that's just my opinion. Uh, next one is um, from them, again, it's a Quirkus Free, the Patreya, which was like a wood, uh, how different woods can uh, impact the whiskey. So yeah, this is the third one <laughs> they did. Mm, a little bit hit and miss, I would say. I not really like it that much. But then, the last one, the last one. This is where, in my view, High Coast shines the most. But that's just my opinion, and you are right to correct me if you want to, or have another opinion, of course. And that is when they do share cask matured whiskies. Uh, I would highly recommend you, if you ever get a chance to try a buy, or buy it, a buy, buy, B-E-R-G, which means mountain, mountain here in Sweden. That one is fantastic, sherry influenced, or sherry matured whiskey from High Coast. But this one is a High Coast whiskey, but it's um, not uh, released by them, it's released by another Swedish independent bottler known as Selected Malts in their Selected Swede series they did. So this is this one. An eight year old sherry hogshead. This, oh my god. I really like this one. They did two other expressions, a virgin oak. And an ex isla cask, but this one, oh, it's good. So yeah, now we've done Swedish whiskies. Now we're gonna do blends, Scottish blended whiskies. So yeah, stay tuned, people. Stay tuned. Yeah, everybody. Let's start getting into the Scotch whiskies. But first, we're gonna do some blends. And just so you know, I used to have a lot more blends than these, um, but over the years, they've been drinking up, I'm drinking them up, share them with people, or just give them away, like sharing. Um, so I have a few still left, so let's start with Compass Box. I have the Sila. Always good to have around, I think. <clears throat> if you have people who are new to whiskey, this could be a good introduction. Uh, another one which I do really like, and I'm gonna get a second ball of this as soon as I finish it. It's a spice tree. Yeah, spice tree. It is to me a really good Christmas whiskey. Uh, unfortunately, it has become ridiculously overpriced today due to the hype over compass box. I do not say that compass box make bad stuff. I'm just saying that uh, prices have gone up so much that most of the limited stuff are, yeah. <clears throat> I don't care anymore. Let's say it like that. So let's put it here. And uh, the next ones are from Douglas Lang, actually. I used to have quite a few Douglas Lang releases, but not anymore. Um, let's start with the first one, and that is Big Pete. 
really nice one. I really like the label. And I do like <clears throat> it's a blended malt whiskey from Isla with Arbeg, Kale Isla, Bowmore, and Port Allen as well. Even though it's just maybe it's a tiny, tiny drop of drop of Port Allen. There's still really old stuff in these. So yeah. Good stuff if you like smoking whiskey. And good to have around. Uh and we're going to continue the whole Big Pete. I have um, all the, not all of them, but I have some Big Pete Christmas editions I want to show. Here's one. I don't remember their, what year they were released. But I have all the way from 2014 to 2018. So here we go. One of them. I think it's 2018. I could be wrong there. So please write me up. Um, uh, scold me if I'm wrong. Whatever. Another one. The first one I ever bought of them. And the last one. Yeah. Uh, I used to collect these. I don't collect them anymore because I just took too much space and I lost the interest in them. Maybe one day I will continue doing it. Who knows? But yeah, that's it basically on the whole Scottish um, blended whiskies. And uh, this will also be the conclusion of this part because I'm going to do this in two parts. Because <laughs> this is just going to be a very long video else. So I will cut it down to two videos. So this will be part one. Next one will be my whole Scottish whiskey collection. Yeah, and quite a big, not a big, big, but quite a nice Capleton selection as well. And some Islas and other ones as well. So people, stay tuned. Thank you. Please write in the comment section. Do whatever you want. Seriously. Feel free to do what you want. Um, yeah, and if there's anything you want to know about these whiskies that I have been showing you, please write in the comment section. As I said before, I'm repeating myself again. <laughs> but and, uh, until the next time, on the next part, take care and I'll see you then. Bye.